In this video, we will discuss surface profiles and profile views. If you'd like to follow along with this video, please open the file 0802 Surface Profiles and Profile Views.dwg located in the training folder as discussed in the Working with this Dataset video. Civil 3D provides some great tools to create profiles that will read a surface. To create a surface profile, we will select the horizontal alignment and in the contextual ribbon, we will choose the Surface Profile tool from the Launchpad panel. Civil 3D will read the surfaces in your file and then you can simply click Add to add that surface profile. Note that before I do so, you can also define some sample offset profiles and those too will be dynamic. You can simply toggle this on and add let's say 12 comma negative 12 to define sample offsets that will be read by the surface. I'll just click add here. I'm now adding that surface profile which will update dynamically. If you want to define a layer for this object, you can click here. If you want to change the style, you can also click here as well. Now that I've created a surface profile, I would like to draw this in the profile view. You don't have to. This surface profile has actually already been created, but we want to actually see this in a profile view. So let's click on Draw in Profile View. That brings up the Create Profile View wizard. And this is a standard wizard interface where you get to define the default settings for the profile view that you are creating. First, you can define a name. So I'll go ahead and just type this in and we'll say US-100 existing. I could have just used the parent alignment name as well. In this case, I want to define the profile view style that will be used. So I want to use full grid because I want to see a full grid system along with the profile. Click next. You can define a station range if you'd like. A station range for that sheet. We'll go with automatic. Click next. For the profile view height, you can actually define a user specified height range for minimum and maximum. And you can even define split profile views should your existing surface be very steep and need to be split across the different sections. We'll just go with automatic. Click next. I have another opportunity to change any of the different settings here. Click next. And then data bands is where you can define existing and proposed elevations to display below or above the profile view. We'll just go with the default EGFG elevation and stations and click next. Profiles can also be hatched to show cut and fill areas as well as multiple boundaries if you so desire. You can also import criteria as well if you need to. We don't have any to show so let's just go ahead and click on create profile view. It is prompting us for a lower left corner for the origin and I will simply click somewhere above here and just like that I now have a profile view. Also displayed is the existing ground. Again, as mentioned before, profiles are stored under the alignment that they have been created under. So if we look under the US-100 existing, you'll see that I have a profile right there as well as a profile view. If you'd like to change the name of this profile, simply right click on it here in the Prospector tab, go to Properties, and we'll call this one US-100EX. Note that I can also change the profile style of how that grade line is being displayed. We'll click OK. And now we have the name for that profile. Let's go ahead and create a profile and profile view of our bypass alignment. I'll select this alignment and choose Surface Profile. Again, we'll pick the same exact surface as combined in G. And I can change the style here, but we'll go with the defaults. Click Draw in Profile View. And in this case, I actually want to change the profile view name to Bypass. And for the profile view style, I want to change this to no grid. So this will show an outer boundary for the profile view, but no grid so that it makes it easier to do designing without snapping accidentally to the profile view grid. We'll go with the other default settings and click Create Profile View. And again, this will prompt us for the lower left corner. So as I place that, I notice that it's actually in the way of my design or my roadway here. So one of the great things about the profile view is that you can select it. Now, if I select this, that selects the profile, not the profile view. Let me press escape. If I pick the profile view, you'll notice that I can actually move all of it around by simply picking the lower left corner and it stays dynamically linked to the profile view. So there are two profile views with their profiles and their bands as well. So let's say I'm going to eventually do a design profile for my bypass, but I want to superimpose the grade line for the existing center line onto this profile view so I can actually see it while I'm doing my design. 
So I'm going to select the profile view. And then in the launch pad, there's a superimposed profile command, which is a great command. When you don't know what to do, look to the command line window. So it's asking me, select the source profile. Don't forget, a profile is the actual grade line. So I'm going to select the source profile. And then it says, select destination profile view. So I'm going to select my profile view. And that is not the profile. That's anywhere along the grid here. So I'll pick here. And then I am prompted with some superimposed profile options. Basically, you can define the horizontal and vertical mid-ordinate distances for accuracy. So you want these to be pretty tight, but not too tight so you get too much granularity, making your file a little bit slower. I'll simply click OK, and it superimposes that profile right on my profile view, which is just fantastic. Now, it is using the same exact profile style. So because I already have the profile selected, I need to press Escape, select the profile itself, and now I can change the profile properties. What I want to actually do is copy this profile style and make my own. So I'll go to Profile Properties. And then in the object style, I'm going to actually click on this little drop down and select copy current selection. I'll change this to existing offset. And all I want to do is just change the color. So watch what I can do right here, because I'm going to just use this as a visual aid. I can select these. It'll still go on the same layer. All I want to do is change the color. So in the color column, I'll simply pick this here and let's say change it to white. Click OK. Click OK. It's using that style. Click OK again, press Escape, and now I have that profile displayed the way that I want to. Again, the beauty of Civil 3D and Surface Profiles, whether they're proposed or existing, is that they will update automatically. So let's examine that functionality. Up in the viewport controls, I'm going to change my viewport configuration to two horizontal very easily. Let's put the profile view in my view right there. And on the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select my alignment and then using the grips, and again, you wouldn't normally do this, of course, but this is just to show this functionality. As I move my horizontal alignment, because this is a surface profile, this will update the surface grade line automatically in the profile view, which again is pretty cool. If you have a proposed profile, that will not update because it has nothing to update to. You are creating a proposed profile. This concludes this video discussing surface profiles and profile views.